and tangents so, and, and no, rants. This is, and, this is good. So uh, I've, got, I've got two more points, right? No Just problem. one thing is, um, so one of the things people love about you, MashaAllah, again, is your language, is your referencing, your academic style. What's with all this kind of language? Like, you know, a lot of people would hear your words and they'll be like, it sounds wonderful. I love what he's saying. I love that he's talking for Islam, but I don't really get it all, right? So tell well, me about some of these yeah. big words, glossary. Yeah, language. sure. I think a lot of it's changed now. So in actual mm-hmm. fact, I, you know, I think other brothers now, like Muhammad <laughs> Hijab and uh, Sabor, they, they, I think they're more complicated than me yeah. sometimes, right? <laughs> so I think I've learned as a result of writing the book, because my audience was first, second year students, mm. I tried to break it down as much as possible. If I did use a word, I explained the principle and the concept, so I have tried to change. But I think it's very powerful, bro, because words are vehicles to meaning, right? Mm. And people attach meaning to certain words, obviously. So take, for example, and that's where the art of Tao is the art of changing language. Because okay. take, for example, the word fear. In a post-secular context, fear is you're scared of an enemy, right? Mm. So when you say fear of Allah, subconsciously, many secular people don't have a religious background. They, they think that you're scared of Allah like an enemy. But that's not the kind of fear of Allah that you should have in the Islamic tradition, mm. right? Because Allah is not an enemy, right? Do you see the point? Yeah. So, you know, the type of fear like I, I like to describe it is like, say you're walking in a mall or in a, in, in a shopping center and you see this mother telling off a child and the child is holding onto the leg of the mother saying, sorry, sorry. She's fearful of loss of connection. She's fearful of the consequences of that loss of connection. Wow. Yeah. That's the type of fear that we're talking about, generally speaking. Obviously, we should have this awe of Allah in terms of his majesty, but you don't fear Allah like he's your enemy, right? Mm. But people, like especially in the Greek language, when you say, you know, uh, now for Vasudon Theo, yeah, to be scared of God, it means, oh my God, you should be scared of him. He's going to destroy you kind of thing. And he's going to send you to hell. Mm. Yes, we believe in hell for sure. But we also know in Islam that Allah doesn't want you to go to hell. Because mm. Allah says in the Quran, he prefers belief for his servants. If you look at yeah. the Mufassirin, the exegetes of Islam, they basically said that Allah doesn't want, he wants goodness for you. He wants guidance for you. That's the whole point of the Quran, right? Mm. So it's a very nuanced theology. So I don't like using... Uh, that word much uh, you probably don't hear me see use that word much in public discourse i would use god consciousness or mindfulness mm. of god and if i do use the word i'll try and define it so like what like i did in my book mm. so now that's not only the reason why i use words by the way sometimes it's just because you're in a kind of academ- academic yeah. culture and environment it just happens mm. to, 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 to use it that way but the, you should have a strategy for your language you should use particular words like, for example, Ar-Rahman, I don't really, I try not to translate it as the merciful. I translate it as the intensely merciful. Mm. Because Ar-Rahman comes from, it means three major things. That Allah's mercy is a boiling over mercy. It's a very intense mercy. Allah's mercy is an immediate mercy. And Allah's mercy is so powerful that nothing can stop. And that's a different, that's what it means. Mm. Now, just saying the merciful in an English language, people's connotation to that means, oh, he's compassionate, he's kind or something. But it's more than that. And I think we have a job especially in the da'wah, to change our language. Like, take, for mm. example, prayer. I try not to use the word prayer in certain contexts. Because when people mean prayer, they think, supplication, I'm going to ask something. But is salah just asking something? Salah is bigger than that. Mm. Salah, the prayer five times a day that we do, is a supplication. It's a dhikr. It's a hamd. It's being grateful. It's a movement. It's a sound. It's a connection. It's a divine conversation. It's all of these amazing things. How can you reduce it to that word? Because words are vehicles so to meaning. And the art of doubt, bro, is trying to change our language. And, and I think Amazing. one scholar that tried to do that uh, is, for example, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. He's tried to, and I actually got this point from him in one of mm. his videos, which is a very important point, is that you need to try and change the language, right? I remember one scholar said to me, oh, you think all these old guys were wrong in using this language? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm not saying that in an arrogant way. He's like, yeah. they picked a Christian language, a post-secular language, mm. and they... It, and they superimpose it on the Quranic discourse, on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is frankly, we should choose the most appropriate words that are connected to the Islamic meanings. And those mm. meanings are profound. Fine, you won't get it perfect, but let's try our best. Do you see? Amazing. So one of the reasons is that, it's not the f- only reason. The other reason is as a strategy to uplift and empower uh, us and to show that Islam can be intellectual and rational at the same mm. time and it Wonderful, has a powerful yeah. position. Uh, unfortunately, maybe in the past some of it was showing off. May Allah forgive me. Um, but yeah, bro. That's so, wonderful. What was it no, no, I, you know, what? I'm really glad I asked you that now because what you're saying is so true. It's all about the communication and the words that you use, and it can get you two different results. You know, absolutely. So, so it's now, for amazing. example, if I if I said you had to change or you had to transform, 
wink mm. wink yeah, yeah. We, we know what this means it, yeah. it, you know anyway the point is what would you rather choose mm. i'd rather use transform it yeah. sounds less painful <laughs> sure exactly yeah it, 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 it's less, less painful so yeah so language Amazing. is very important and you know what it makes me realize you know that hadith that talk about your tongue mm. and because of your tongue you'd be thrown into the hellfire because you know the words are heavy bro yeah. words are heavy Spe- uh, speak good or remain silent yeah we're not conscious sometimes even the words that we use. And, I, and me too. I talk a hell of a lot sometimes and I waffle. Proof is today. Yeah? And sometimes I go on tangents that are not even connected and I don't even make sense, especially when I'm tired like today. So you see, I've put the excuse in. Yeah, that's good. But, the, but the point is, Habibi, is that we need to be very careful the way you use language. And Dao is such a, Dao is much bigger than you. You're calling people to reconnect to Allah. You're saying to humanity that your purpose in life is to, to know Allah, to love Allah, to obey Allah, and to be humble before Him, and to direct all internal and external acts of worship to Allah alone. That's ibadah, that's worship. Mm. That's higher than anything you can imagine. Choose your language carefully, right? Choose it carefully. How mm. dare we, you know? Just be so random with the language that we use. We should be very careful with the language that we use, you know? And 